of God. Do you know that the man of God can touch you? Hallelujah. And God can work through him. Hallelujah. So we just thank God for this morning. We thank you, God, for what you've already done. It's just been a powerful uh, weekend with God. Let's Two prophets be in a house together all weekend. You can just imagine how it's been. My God, you know, so we just thank God for that. But I know that that's what God is calling for anyway. You know, he's already told me that it's a higher level of consecration that we must go into. Hallelujah. To be able to tap into some realms that we never tapped into before. Hallelujah. So I encourage you, even during your studying time, really press in. Take your time. Take your time. Don't just go straight to your word if you, if you don't have to. Let that worship music go and begin right in your own atmosphere, in your own homes. Begin to press in. Press in in this season. Press in for that word of God because there is a revelation and a knowledge that's going to be released in this hour. Hallelujah. That is going to unlock some things. And that's why on this morning I told us to put our keys in our hand. Hallelujah. Because we got keys. Hallelujah. God gave us keys. When, when, it's, when Jesus left here, he gave us keys of authority. Hallelujah. So that the same authority that he had while he was here on earth to do the things that he did, he passed them down to us. But we don't always remember that we got keys. So that's why we're symbolically putting those keys in our hand because we're taking back our authority on today. Amen. Hallelujah. If I was to have a title on today, I would like to use a familiar phrase. And that familiar phrase is, what you don't use, you lose. Amen? What you don't use, you lose. So if you don't use your authority, you will lose your authority. If you don't use your gift, you lose your gift. It lays there doormat. Okay, so I know we are born with the gift, but what good is it if we don't use it? You know, if we don't use our authority, if we don't use it in our homes, if we don't use it on our jobs, what we don't use, we will lose. And that's why we got our keys out on today, because we're letting the enemy know I'm going to walk in my authority. My keys are in my hand. I already know that whatever I bind on earth will be bound in heaven. I know that whatever I loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Hallelujah. I don't want you to worry about the last season because I hear the Lord say that the last season did not destroy you. It did not take you out. So therefore all it did was make you stronger. Hallelujah. Therefore all it did was make you a force to be reckoned with and you are backed up by the most high God. Hallelujah. Nothing shall separate you from the love of God. Hallelujah. See because in the last season we had ourselves that we were going to be faithful hallelujah that we were going to be faithful no matter what hallelujah if I get down to my last piece of bread hallelujah I'm still going to be faithful hallelujah if I get down to my last dime I'm still going to be faithful hallelujah I'll trust you Lord no matter what hallelujah so he found his faithful hallelujah just like he was looking for those during the time of Sodom and Gomorrah, he was looking for some people that would declare that he was Lord and live faithful, hallelujah. In the last season, God selected those who were going to stand the test of times, hallelujah. So if you stood, I don't care if you came in on a piece of the ship that got shipwrecked, all that matters is that it didn't take you under, you're still alive. A glory to God. Hallelujah. So that means that you made it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's go to Job 22 and 28. Job, the 22nd chapter and the 28th verse. 
I want to talk to us today and teach today about declaring and decreeing a thing. Because we need to be decreeing it more. God said, David, that's your keys on today. Your keys today is to learn how to decree a thing. Hallelujah. So Job 22 and 28. It says, thou shalt decree a thing and it shall be established unto thee and the light shall shine upon thy ways let's read that together for those that have it come on let's read it one two three in unison thou shalt decree a thing and it shall be established unto thee and the light shall shine upon thy ways Hallelujah. I know we got more than that in here. Come on, let us get into some unity on today. We're going to do it again. Come on, find it in your phones or in your, your Bibles, wherever you need to find it on today. Because, see, we coming in on this ship together. Hallelujah. God's about to do some things. He's about to restore some things. He's about to reform some things. Hallelujah. And I'm going to grab my sister and my brother's hand and say, come on. Let's do this together. Hallelujah. Come on, let's do it together. Job 22 and 28. It says, Thou shalt decree a thing, and it shall be established unto thee, and the light shall shine upon thy ways. Amen. So the word of God lets us know that we shall decree a thing. And see, like I said, it's so much power when we take and when you're studying, take the time to look up the words. Take the time. Okay, because in the Old Testament time, the kings, they decreed a thing. And when they decreed the thing, it was just like the law when they decreed it. You could be punished if you didn't do what they decreed. Okay, and so what God is saying here is that when we decree a thing, that it shall be established. What does that mean? That means that when I speak what already is in heaven, in heaven's will, when I speak it out of my mouth into the earth realm, it has to be established. Hallelujah, because God said that I can decree a thing and it shall be established. That means that the enemy cannot frustrate Will he try to delay it? He can try all of that stuff because it doesn't matter because it's a set time that the words that come out of my mouth have to manifest. Hallelujah. And that's what God wants us to recognize in this season. That is the power that the enemy has tried to take away from us. That is the keys that he has tried to take away from us. Our prayer life should be full of decrees and declares. It should be full of it. You know, that, and, and that's how the enemy is getting an opportunity to rob us from the power of our prayers. Because like I said, prayer, when we go to prayer, when we go into prayer, prayer should have a mission. It should have a purpose. Hallelujah. Because God already knows that Uncle Tommy's sick and he's been sick on his bed for six months. He knows all of that. But what he gave us is keys. He gave us keys to pray for the sick. Hallelujah. And they shall be healed. He gave us keys. Hallelujah. To loose the, those that are bound. Hallelujah. He gave us keys to be able to walk into our perspective places. He gave us authority. Hallelujah. So when I began to decree a thing, that's why it's important to pray the word of God. You got to learn how to pray the word of God. Because see, I can't go wrong when I'm established so the power is locked inside of my mouth hallelujah that's where the power is it's locked inside of our mouth because we got to send these words out into the atmosphere the atmosphere needs to be penetrated by our words hallelujah the enemy moves when we speak out of our mouths and begin to decree a thing he recognizes the word of god and whenever he recognizes the word of god he must flee hallelujah i was laying in my bed 
prayed last night and because me and my sister had been doing so much praying and we went into realms in the spirit hallelujah because God has taken me higher there's there's there's, there's enemies the enemy is mad hallelujah but I, I'm not worried about the enemy on today and I, when I was asleep I felt the presence of the enemy try to come into my room and I just spoke to the enemy I didn't get scared I didn't get paranoid I spoke to the enemy and I told him I said now Satan you know you can't come up here you know you got to go and I command that you leave up out my house in the name of Jesus hallelujah see that's why we can't be unsure of ourselves that's why I, I talked about condescending answers when you're not really sure if it's a yes or a no no we need a yes or a no remember on Friday I said listen there's a difference between boldness and loudness but God is looking he's requiring boldness from each and every one of us see bold is when we know our authority it's not about how loud I speak hallelujah but bold is when I know my authority it's when I know that when I tell the enemy that he must flee at the name of Jesus that he's got to do so it's when I know that when I declare the works of God and I say greater is he that is in me than he that is in this world hallelujah I recognize it I know it I just decree the thing hallelujah so at that point in time whatever the enemy was trying to use against me whoever the enemy was trying to use against me. I just spoke a word. Hallelujah. And I said, greater is he that is in me. Hallelujah. That took away the enemy's fight. Hallelujah. That took away the enemy's power right then and there. Because greater is he that is in me than he that is in this world. Hallelujah. And we got to know that out today. We got to know it. The power is locked inside of our mouths. The power is locked inside because we don't recognize the power of the any authority that backs up the words that we speak. God wants to back up his word, but we got to let it out. We got to proclaim it. We got to speak it. And when we speak it for those that are living a life according to his word, when he will, and when we're obedient, when we speak it, he backs it up. Hallelujah. And then we don't have to worry about people. We wouldn't be so moved by people and so worried about people if we knew the authority and the power we had. Hallelujah. We would be embracing one another's gifts. We would be loving on one another. We would be pushing each other forward because we don't, there's no competition in that. There's no competition with that. There's no, there's the only competition is us fighting as one to make sure that the enemy's powers is destroyed on earth. And that ain't even no competition because it's already done. Hallelujah. We've already been handed the keys. But what are we going to do with our keys? Are we going to just put them down? You know, whenever I come in that house and I don't make sure I put my keys in a particular place where I know where they're at, I end up losing them. So I have to literally say to myself, okay, I'm going to put my keys right here on my bedside table. You know, and that, that's how we got to be. But we ain't even going to put them down. We're going to learn how to walk with our keys. So whenever we need them, we have access to them. Hallelujah. So what does it mean that I'm walking with my keys? That means I am walking ready to decree and declare what God said. I'm walking ready to do what God needs me to do. I'm walking and I'm ready to walk in my authority, walk in my power. No longer am I going to be leaving home without it. Hallelujah. They say you shouldn't leave home without your American Express and all that stuff. I say don't leave home without the power of God. Hallelujah. It's not what's in my wallet, but it's what's in my mouth. It's what's in my heart. Hallelujah. That sword is in my heart. That sword is in my mouth. The word of God says your word have I hidden in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. So the power is in us. Hallelujah. A decree in the Old Testament, like I said, it was given by kings. It carried the same weight as a law. Your, your, our decree carries the same weight as the law. Now they're going around and they're passing all these laws that we're not happy about. But listen, our decree carries even more weight than the law. So imagine if all of us was to 
get together, get together in unity, everyone in the body of Christ, and start decreeing a thing. Hallelujah. If we will start getting up in the morning, get us a map and put it on our wall and begin to decree over every state in the United States. Hallelujah. That these wicked laws of the land shall be abolished. Hallelujah. That not one of them should happen. That every single lie of the enemy is being destroyed. Imagine if we recognize that. Imagine if we walked in a power. Hallelujah. Imagine if we had the keys to even reverse some of the stuff that's been put into place lately that's not of God. We can reverse that thing. That's the power of a child of God. We are not subject to the laws of man. We can reverse that thing. He said whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Hallelujah. It's not happening in heaven. So it shouldn't be happening down here on the earth. But he's waiting for the elect to say so. Hallelujah. He's waiting for the chosen people of God to say so. To say it is so. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. In the scripture, God promises that if we decree it, it would be established. In other words, if we decree it, it would become a fact. It would be established. If he spoke it, then it would be manifested. Hallelujah. See, that's why we're giving up hope. Because we're speaking things, but we're not decreeing it. Hallelujah. And we've lost the meaning of decree. Hallelujah. So the, all those promises that God has given us, it's time for us to decree it. Hallelujah. Decree it. Declare it, yeah. which means to speak of it. Hallelujah. To make it known. And then decree it, which means that it shall be established. Hallelujah. That there's nothing that the enemy can do to stop it. Hallelujah. We got to see ourselves in this season as unstoppable. Yeah. Hallelujah. We got to see ourselves as the chosen children of God, a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. Hallelujah. We got to see ourselves as that. We're not beggars. We're not borrowers. Hallelujah. We're not the, the, the tail. Hallelujah. But we are the head. And we got to see ourselves as that. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. A decree causes what is true in heaven to be manifested on earth. That's what a decree causes. As it is in heaven, so it is on earth. That's how we call down heaven's will. We call down heaven's will into our life by decreeing. It's different than any statements that we can give. I can say all day long, tell everybody not to go out the building. Don't go out the building. Don't go out the building. That's just a statement. It doesn't mean that if I say it, it's going to be done. But if a person of the law comes in here and says, don't go out the building, I bet you nobody's going to go out that building. Listen, as an ambassador of the kingdom, you are law. Hallelujah. You are a person of law. And you can say to the enemy, hallelujah, I bind you up. I forbid you to come against my child. I forbid you to come against my mother. Hallelujah. And it carries the same weight as the law. Hallelujah. We got to grab a hold of that. We got to grab a hold of that. Because when we grab a hold of that, some of the stuff we've been going through in the last season, it won't even have a chance. Like I said, some of that stuff that tried to bind us up in the last season, we're going to shake the dust off our feet in this season. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So a decree carries the same authority of a court order. And we know how we get when, a, when we get a court order. You knock on that door, somebody knock on that door and they got a court order. Man, you don't even have to know what's going on. You just start trembling like, oh my goodness, what's going on? Who's going to take me to court? Listen, your decree has the same weight as a court order. If I decree a thing, hallelujah, that enemy begins to shake. He begins to act just like we would because he recognizes that somebody knows their power. Somebody knows their authority. Somebody knows that I must listen to them and what they're speaking. Somebody's not going to let me get away with my same old plots. But somebody's walking in their authority. 
We got to learn to decree a thing. Decree a thing. Change your prayer life around. If you ain't already decreeing and declaring, you go to a prayer life of decreeing and declaring. Because we're in a series right now. We're talking about equipping the harvest. Listen, you can't equip the harvest if you don't know your authority. Because you, God is sending us out to the harvest as a person of law. Law, law, we carry the law of the kingdom. We carry the establishment of the kingdom. So he's sending us out as law officers. That we're gonna we're gonna begin to regulate what's going on in this earth realm through his kingdom being established. And how is he gonna establish his kingdom? He's gonna establish it through us. Hallelujah. That's why we declared and decreed on the other week that I am kingdom. Can we say that again? I am kingdom. Come on. One, two, three. I am kingdom. Hallelujah. The enemy needs to know that we know who we are. The worst person and or the saddest person is a person who don't know who they are. Because when you don't know who you are, the enemy will make you be whoever he wants you to be. Hallelujah. But God's people in this Season must know who they are. Who are you? You are an ambassador of the kingdom. You are the chosen and the elect of God. You are the royal priesthood. Yeah. Hallelujah. You are God's child. You are God's son. Yeah. You are God's daughter. Hallelujah. We must know that and walk in our authority. Hallelujah. So when we declare and decree God's word over any area of our lives that is unfulfilled, Whatever the enemy was trying to do is forbidden and he can no longer operate. It shall be fulfilled. It shall be fulfilled. My victory is, is not an option. Hallelujah. My joy is not an option. We've been presenting that thing like it's an option. Lord, if you want me to be happy, are you kidding me? Hallelujah. Lord, if you want me to have joy, hallelujah, are you kidding me? Of course he wants us, us to have joy. You know, he, of course he wants us. You know, and, I, and, I, and I, God had really dealt with me about the way I go to him in prayer. We got to go to him, go to him in prayer, knowing our authority. We, we get so caught up in this stuff. We hear other people saying, and we begin to be like the Sadducees and the Pharisees. That was their problem. They were so busy trying to pray like each other. You know, but God was looking for some people that recognized their power and authority. So it's time for us to recognize our power during the, our power and authority. There's things that before we even go to God in prayer, we need to already have went to him fasting and, and ready for him to speak to us. That way we don't have to say, Lord, if it's your will. No, God, show me your will. Because when I go to the throne room, I want to decree and declare your will. Because remember what I said, the enemy does not, he don't respond to condescending reports. He don't respond to that. Lord, if it's your will. Yes, we do got to seek God's will. But you make sure that once God has shown you his will, that you make sure you go back to that throne room and declare his will. Yeah. Hallelujah. Don't keep saying over and over, if it's your will, if it's your will, if it's your will. Because the enemy sees, he sees some doubt in all of that. Come on, come on, come on. So yes, I seek him. I get my answer. We talked about Nehemiah, right? Nehemiah sought the Lord when they came to him and they wanted him to go back to Jerusalem they, to, to, to build the wall. He sought God, right? Yeah. And once he got permission from the king, after that, he knew what he had to do. He didn't have to wonder anymore. He didn't say to Sam Ballin and Tobiah, well, if the Lord want me to come down off this wall. No, he said, no, I will not come down off this wall. So we got to know our authority in this season. That's when the enemy's going to respond. When we know our authority, when there's no condescending answers or replies being given to him. When he knows that the, the, this, this woman is, that this man is decreeing a thing. So there's nothing I can do about it. Hallelujah. What you decree, you must declare. To declare is to make known. Okay, it's to make known. Declarations are what we speak into the atmosphere. Making known of what we already have possession of. That's why I need to know the word. Yeah. Because the word lets me know everything I already have possession of. 
and then I declare it. I make it known. So I make it known that, you know, the this, 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 this scripture isn't just the scripture sitting there, but it belongs to me. It belongs to me. God said I can have it. Hallelujah. He said I can have it. He said it's mine. So I'm declaring, hallelujah, that even if it's not in my physical possession right now, I just declare that it's mine. Okay? Uh, my, my, my computer's home. It may not be in my physical possession right now, but it's mine. You can't have my computer. Hallelujah. Because it belongs to me. So there's some things right now that God wants to give his people that it might not be in your physical possession right now, but you can declare that it's mine. Hallelujah. The school that I want. Hallelujah. The school that I already put the manual together for. I got the chairs. I got the desk. I got my school book. here on earth. See, this is meat, honey. This is the type of word that will push us forward into what God has for us. Everybody wants to feel good messages. I don't need another message telling me how I'm going to feel about something that I haven't got yet. I'm ready to receive. Hallelujah. Are you ready to receive? See, that's what's going to draw men all under God. He said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto thee. Hallelujah. When the world begins to see the manifestation of God in our lives. Hallelujah. When, he, when they begin to see the power of God working and moving in our lives. And I'm not simplifying this thing down to just no material realm. Because the worst people in the world got millions of dollars. That's not what I'm talking about. But I'm talking about his kingdom being established through us here on earth. I'm talking about our ability to be able to love our enemies. Like I talked about on Friday night. Our ability to be able to let go of the pride so that we can walk in our authority. To know what um, arguments we're going to walk away from and which ones we're going to confront. Hallelujah. Yeah, thank you, Jesus. Because we don't want to get caught up in foolishness in this hour. We got to stay focused. Focus on declaring a thing in this hour. Focus on it. Hallelujah. Because we've lost too much in the last season. There's, there's, a, there's a storehouse of gifts that God got waiting. And it's waiting for us to tap into it. Come on now. Of, of all times, right now in this earth realm, the kingdom of God is needed like never before. It's needed. It's, we need to take over like never before. And when we know our authority, we take over. So decrees what causes what is true in heaven to be manifested on earth. When we declare and decree God's word over any area of our lives, hallelujah, it has to line up. In the Hebrew, the word decree means to divide, separate, and destroy. So that just, that turns it, and when I looked it up in the English dictionary, it carried the weight of the law. Okay, and then as I began to study a little more, and I saw that in the Hebrew, it really got deep. It said to divide, 
destroy and separate. That's what the word of, of the word declare, decree means. Excuse me, decree. We establish it. Okay, and how we divide it? We divide what God is saying from the lies of the enemy. That's the first thing we must do. We must let the enemy know that I recognize the truth of God's word over your lies. Okay, I recognize it. I recognize the truth of God's word over the lies of the enemy because there is an enemy that's always trying to put lies over what over God's word. He's always trying to, to, to put lies and, and instead he wants you to hear his lies, in other words, instead of hearing the word of God. That's the fight that goes on in our minds. It's because God is saying one thing and because we're looking at it in the earth realm, not knowing that God moves from the spirit realm and in, into the earth realm. Yeah. Hallelujah. So we got our eyes on the natural and we don't see it coming to pass. So therefore, we're allowing that the, end, that the enemy drown out what God is saying with his lies. But see, when we decree a thing, we divide that up. We separate that up. We let the enemy know, look, I know the truth. I know the difference between a truth and a lie. Amen. So that's how we begin to divide. All right? And then after we divide, we, I already went into separate. We separate it. Okay? We, we, we put the word, the word of truth in place. Okay? So we go to our word and we find the truth of the word of God. We find that scripture. That, that puts it in place because he recognizes the word of God. He recognizes the word of God. So we go ahead and we put that in place. Okay, we separate it. We separate it. Okay, we already divided it. We already said, enemy, I know the truth of God's word. We separate it when we speak God's word. I want to make sure it's clear. Hallelujah. And then after that, what happens is destroyed. The enemy's plans is destroyed. His words is destroyed. Hallelujah. So I hear the Father saying that many of my children are not walking in their authority. They're not using the power I have given them. And because of this, it appears that the enemy is winning the war. But God is about to turn it all around in this season. That's why the word that he's sending out is different. Hallelujah. And if you got to shake yourself up, don't worry about what's going on around us. I just break up, bind up distractions. I'm telling you right now, the key is to fight against even the enemy that's trying to cause our minds to wonder during this word. Fight against it because you're being given the keys. So therefore, next week, you don't have to go through it like you did last week. Yeah. Hallelujah. Because you got keys. And you're going to do, you're going to turn some things around. You're going to bind some things up. Yeah. You're going to go back home into your home and turn some stuff around. Let the enemy know that I got my keys. I walk in authority. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let us go to 1 King 17 and 1. Let's take a look at what happens when a man of God who is outnumbered and dealing with a bunch of stiff-necked idol worshipers decrees a word. Okay, 1 King 17 and 1. First King, the 17th chapter, the first verse. It says, And Elijah the Tishbite, who was of the inhabitants of Gilead, said unto Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel liveth, before whom I stand, there shall not be dew or rain, these years, but according to my word. This is how Elijah entered on the scene. They, they, when I was studying, like, there was no introduction of him before. He just shows up as a mouthpiece of God, declaring. He was declaring this thing. He was decreeing this thing. This wasn't no generic prophecy he was giving them. Anybody can say you're going to get a house 
or a car. Anybody can say that. But God is looking for some people who can really speak a word from heaven. See, this, this was going to come to pass. Either it was going to come to pass or it wasn't. But he knew that if he declared and decreed a thing. Because see, he had already been given permission from God when he showed up on the scene to come up against Jezebel and her wicked kingdom. So therefore, if I've already been given permission from God, then I already have the power and authority to declare and decree a thing. So he was declaring and decreeing a thing because he had the authority. And he wasn't worried about Ahab. Ahab had a whole soldier, a, a whole team of soldiers behind him. Jezebel had all of control over people in their minds. She had even got some of the prophets to turn to the prophets of Baal. 450 lion prophets she had. She had all of that control. But the man of God to, he stepped on the scene and recognized his power. Oh my God, can you imagine if we can begin to step on the scene like he did, like Elijah did, recognizing our power, not worrying about it, saying to ourselves, if God be for me, who can be against me? God is looking for some people that know their authority like that on today. Not only did he say, is it not going to be rain? I said, man, he was bad. He said, it ain't even going to be no doom. I ain't, I, you ain't even going to think that it might be rain. You won't even see a cloud until I speak and say it's going to be a cloud. Hallelujah. And that's what God is looking for in this hour. It made me think about um, early on when um, I was like really starting to use my prophetic gift. It was about like maybe... I say about 10 years ago. And um, I would sit there in my seat because I was scared to use it. I knew that I had it, but I was just so scared to use it and embrace it because God wasn't giving me generic prophecies. He wasn't telling me to tell people, oh, you're about to get some money. You're about to get a, ha a car or a house. He wasn't doing that. The stuff he was giving me to say, it was either going to be true or not. Okay, and so I was so afraid to use it, and um, but I had to, I had a, a prophetess who was training me at the time, and and so what she would she would say she would look at me for me to speak because she would know God was trying to speak through me, and I wouldn't say it, and then God would use somebody else to say exactly what He told me to say, and so um, it happened a few times, and then God said, "Okay, are, are you gonna keep sitting there like that? Listen, remember my title: If you don't use it, you'll lose it." So He said, "Are you gonna keep sitting there in your seat, uh, afraid? This ain't about you anyway. If you open up your mouth, I speak for you." So there was a young lady, and her mother came, and I had preached that Sunday, and and the Lord began to speak to me, and He said, "Tell her that she's been trying to get that uh, scholarship." So that she could go to school to be a psychiatrist. You know, that they don't have the money that, but God do. And tell her that I said on today is done. She's going to get that scholarship. Yeah. And the mother and her just began to shout and run around the room. And so then I began to recognize that God had put a short word inside of me. Hallelujah. And listen, you don't have to be a prophet or a prophetess for a short word to be inside of you. God wants a short word inside of both of all of us on today. Today. He wants us to have a short word. We all can we all can prophesy. Okay, we all can prophesy. To prophesy doesn't mean that you hold the office of it, but we're all supposed to prophesy. Hallelujah, because it is through signs and wonders, hallelujah, that the world shall be saved. Hallelujah. So we have to recognize when there's a short word. And this man had a short word inside of him. He said, I, he said there, there won't be no rain or no dew until I say so. Yeah. He declared it. He decreed it. What are you going to decree and declare on today? What situation in your life or situations in your life are you going to decree and declare on today? What, what, what area of your life have, have you not been walking in your power and authority, but now that you got your keys back, you're not going to spend another moment there, but you're going to begin to decree and declare a thing. Hallelujah. So he spoke. And he spoke boldly. That brings back up boldness. 
Because a lot, like I said Friday, and I want to say it again, a lot of us been ducking out of being bold, saying, because we think bold and loud is the same thing, and we say, oh, I'm just not loud. It's okay, you don't have to be loud. Because even if he would have said quietly to them, if he would have told them quietly, listen, it won't, I declare and decree that it will not be rain until I say so. It don't matter about that's not boldness. Boldness is knowing that what you say is true. That's what boldness is knowing that you're backed up by God. Boldness is knowing that you're author your authority. Yeah. It's about knowing that you are an ambassador of the kingdom. That's where boldness come at. Listen, the, the, one of the most dangerous people in the world is that person. He may be silent. He ain't got to say a word, but he got his gun on his head. Yeah. Hallelujah. He don't got to say a word. You can just, you see him walking by. You know, you might be there for a fist fight, but you see his gun on his head. Hallelujah. The enemy's coming for a fist fight, but we got our gun on our hip. Hallelujah. We got the word of God. Hallelujah. To fight up against him. Hallelujah. And the God's word is dangerous than any two-edged sword. Hallelujah. It devours the enemy. He can't stand in the midst of it. Hallelujah. Take back your authority. If you don't use it, you'll lose it. We're not going to lose in this season. We're not losing it anymore. Hallelujah. We're going to walk in every level of authority and power that God desires us to walk in. Hallelujah. And so it reads in the next verse. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. It says in 1 Kings 17 and 3. It reads, get thee hence, and turn thee eastward, and hide thyself by the brook Cherith, that is before the Jordan. And it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook, and I have commanded the ravens to feed thee there. You know what this gave Elijah? It gave him immediate confirmation that what he had declared and decreed, God had done. Hallelujah. Because he was giving him a way of escape. Because he said that it wouldn't be rain. So if it wouldn't be rain, the people around him was about to go into a famine. And God was not going to subject his anointed to go through it too. So therefore, he knew that God had immediately heard his word. Listen, we need to know that there's an acceleration that's being placed upon the words that we declare in this season. Hallelujah. Account. 
He wasn't going to have to depend on his homeboys. Hallelujah. He wasn't going to have to depend on his homegirls. He wasn't going to have to do none of that. God, God said, I'm, I'm going to provide for you in the most unusual way. Hallelujah. I'm going I'm to show you where a brook is. Hallelujah. Like I say, I'm going to use that old dirty bird. Hallelujah. To come feed you. Hallelujah. The same ones that talked about you in the last season. Hallelujah. The same ones that denied you access in the last season. The same ones that said no in the last season. Season, hallelujah. God said, I'm going to use them in this season to come feed you. That's the symbol of the raven, hallelujah, because it's not the nature of a raven to bring nobody food. They just like them old turkey vultures that we see on the side of the road. Soon as a dead animal come, boy, I be wanting to just run them all over sometimes. Get away from them, dead animal, because they just look for opportunities to just go ahead and devour something that's already been devoured. Hallelujah, but in this season, hallelujah, hallelujah, God is pouring out fresh oil on his people. Hallelujah, fresh oil, hallelujah, fresh oil on his people. And he said, I'm going to provide for you. I'm going to make a way. That means we need to stop checking that bank account every three minutes. Hallelujah, we worried about it. We basing our lives upon it. But yet and still we say that we serve. So immediately, he had a plan for provision and protection for Elijah. There was provision and protection in that plan. Because God already knew that when Jezebel heard what, what Elijah had done, she was going to try to send all her men. And guess what? She tried to send them, and they couldn't find them nowhere. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. They couldn't find him nowhere. Hallelujah. So that, 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 that just gives me even more praise, hallelujah, about what God is getting ready to do in this season. He's going to cover us. Hallelujah. Not only is he going to provide, hallelujah, but even greater than that is his protection. The most, the greatest thing on earth is the protection of God. He said, I'm going to protect you. Hallelujah. We so enemy focused. Every time I turn around, people talking about haters. Man, listen, I'm not worried about no haters. Hallelujah. I just need God's protection. Hallelujah. He didn't have to worry about Jezebel and none of them soldiers because in his thing, God's provision was protection. That's why we can't do it our way. Because the enemy will tempt people to try to do things and get things crooked. You know, to try to go out there and, and make it happen on our own. But see, when we try to make things happen on our own, it may happen, but it won't be protected. Hallelujah, it's only when we do it God's way. It's only when we do things right, hallelujah, that we get provision and protection. Hallelujah, I don't know about you, but I need provision and protection. Without protection, it would be too easy for the enemy to try to come and take back what God had already provided. And see, it won't be God's fault because when we, when, it, when we do it God's way, we have both provision and protection. Yes. If all states send you a policy or you get on that phone and they begin to tell you about your policy, what sells the policy is what they can offer you. Hallelujah. And so that's what God is doing. When he gives us provision, as his, as his, that policy comes with protection too. Hallelujah. He protects what he provides and he provides for what he protects. Hallelujah. We need to know that on today. We need to know that. Hallelujah. So therefore, what do I need to do? I need to start declaring and decreeing out my mouth. Hallelujah. I need to know that what I don't use, I lose. Hallelujah. So there's not going to be another minute of my life that I lose. Hallelujah. So he gave him a plan for protection. And he gave him immediate confirmation that what he had declared was going to take place. This was the first mention of Elijah. Ma imagine coming out on the scene like that. If they didn't know his name before, they know his name now. Hallelujah. And we ain't looking for no stardom. Elijah wasn't looking for no stardom. 
He wanted to just show them that his God was real. He wanted to show them that his God was greater than a God of Baal and all these other false worshipers. And that's what he's looking for in this hour. What is our intentions? We gotta go back to our motives. What is our motives? Because God is looking for some pure motives. See, I've been stuck in this place because of tradition and things I've been taught. I was thinking for a while, not now, but this was a few years ago, I used to think that I wasn't supposed to have certain things, I wasn't supposed to be able to do certain things, I was supposed to live this life where, you know, um, I'm just always depending on something. The devil is a liar. What God is looking for is my motives. What is my motives for wanting to do what I do? What is my motives for wanting that school? You know, I want a school where when my students come, I can pray Turn it 
whichever way he may. Amen. So that's what we see that went on. I mean, they say she was searching high and low, trying to find food to feed her animals. Hallelujah. But because she had touched God's anointed, she had even sent threats to him and said if she find him, she'll be he'll, he'll be dead. Hallelujah. But don't forget about the provision and protection of God. Hallelujah. It was nothing that Jezebel could do to Elijah. Hallelujah. And see, David knew the same thing. David knew that even though he had many enemies, it was nothing he, they could do about it. Hallelujah. Remember on Friday night when I began to read the 23rd Psalms, I began to quote the 23rd Psalms. David knew what was, he was in the midst of so many enemies. He was outnumbered by his enemies, but he walked around with a short word from God. Hallelujah. He might not have been a perfect man, but he knew his authority. Hallelujah. And that's why when Goliath came and everybody was worried about the size of Goliath, little old David, who stood shorter and smaller than any of them, said, I don't have to worry about Goliath because when I was in the field I already destroyed the bears and the lions hallelujah and God needs somebody on today that knows that when they needed God to make a way he already made a way hallelujah when they needed God's protection he already protected them hallelujah so therefore though they slay me yet will I trust them because I'll rise again hallelujah there's nothing that the enemy can do. David said it best. He said, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Hallelujah. Thy rod and thy staff. Hallelujah. He was talking about the word of God. He had the word of God, and that gave him authority. Hallelujah. How many got the word of God in their hearts? Hallelujah. Thy word have I hidden in thy heart in my heart so I might not sin against you. That's why I ain't gonna mess around and sin against the God I serve. That's why I need you to pray for me, hallelujah, and make sure I keep running, make sure I keep living right. Pray I live right, hallelujah. Pray I run on, hallelujah. Pray that I keep holding up the bloodstained banner because this word is for everybody, hallelujah. There was a requirement, hallelujah. Elijah verse as I begin to wrap up. It says when he finally gets to Ahab he told him to go and gather all the lying prophets that had fell into the bondage of Baal. Hallelujah. So there was like 400, like I said 450 prophets. He gathered them all. He gathered all the lying prophets. He gathered all the children he gathered them all and they all went up to the mountain to see when this man of God came. Because what God wanted, God wanted people to witness his power. Elijah wanted them to witness his power. He didn't want that authority and that, that power, to, he didn't want it to be tied to him. He wanted it to be tied to God. That's when motives show up. That's when motives show up. Okay, and it reads in the 18th, um, the 18th chapter, 37th verse. Okay, here it goes. Hear me, O Lord, hear me, that, these, that this people may know that thou art the Lord God, and that thou hast turned their heart back again. He said, hear me, O Lord, hear me. I want these people to know that it is you, not me. Hallelujah. See, this is where people got it twisted at. This is where people, the prophets in this hour and the apostles and teachers and pastors and, you know, they, they, they want that power connected to them. I don't want that power connected to me. It is nobody but God. I'm nothing but a vessel. Hallelujah. And so that's what he was saying. He said, hear me, O Lord, hear me. 
that this the people may know that thou art the Lord God and that thou hast turned their heart back again. He knew that when they saw God move and when he spoke that it was going to be rain and the rain came, he knew that that would give them a time to repent. And that's what the God wants to go on in the earth realm right now. He wants to give the earth a time to repent. And it's through us declaring and decreeing things and it manifesting when they see the power of God. When they know that I know it ain't her. I know it ain't him. Because she don't try to take none of the glory from God. She don't try to take it. But she points them at God. Hallelujah. She points them at God and lets them know that it is through him. It's not nothing that I can do. So this revealed Elijah's motives. He had a decree this thing against them so they could see how powerful he was. He decreed it so that they would know how powerful his God is. Come on, God has placed us in this earth realm as ambassadors of the kingdom of God. Our job is to release his word all over the earth realm. It's every one of our jobs, not just the leader's jobs, not just this. It's all of our jobs. And that's why we got to study the word. It's all our jobs. And we know it's all our jobs to study God's word. We got to study God's word. It's all of our jobs. And then it's our job to take and to declare it and decree it. We all have been given a responsibility to declare and decree it. We want to see change take place. We need to start declaring and decreeing because it's not through our name that the enemy flees, but it's through the name of Jesus and when we recognize his power. So the people, in verse 3, it says the people saw it and fell on their faces. They said, the Lord, he is God. The Lord, he is God. They saw it and they fell on their faces and said, the Lord, he is God. God wants to do such a demonstration in his people in this hour that those that don't even know him, those that are serving other gods. Listen, these people had started serving Baal. But they knew that if Baal had power, Baal would have made it rain during that three and a half year period. If that God that they so-called serve was that powerful, then how come Jezebel couldn't go to Baal and make it rain? Because the God of God and the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords had proven that he was God. And the people knew that there's no other God beside thee. There was no other little God that they could have turned to that could have made it happen when God said it won't happen. Hallelujah. So they knew it and they recognized it. And in my last verse, 1 King 18, verse 45, it says, And it came to pass in the meanwhile, while the heavens was black with clouds and the wind, and there was a great rain, and Ahab Rode and went to Jezreel when he spoke it. When he spoke it, he spoke the first time that the rain wouldn't come until he spoke it again. And he and now he spoke when he spoke after a three and a half year period, the clouds finally began to form and the rain came. So that lets us know that lets us know, amen, yeah. that God wants to back up. Our word, his word, through us. He wants to back it up. Hallelujah. And there's so many of God's people that are going through situations that they don't have to go through. So many of us, and myself included, because I'm coming into a lot of revelation and wisdom myself have been subjugating ourselves for so many years, fighting the battle and not using half the ammunition that God has for us. 
We're not walking in our full authority. I think I spoke a couple weeks back or, or recently about operating from 50% when we got 100%. Amen. And so what God wants to do in this hour right now and what he's already done really, it's just gonna be up to us to receive it. We could play some, um, maybe that, the prophetic music that we played earlier. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Come on, let us stand to our feet.